Welcome to the channel, Brainiacs. For those new here, my name is Dr. Martin Rutkowski, and I'm a board-certified assistant professor of neurosurgery with expertise in brain tumors. Today's video is meant to be provocative, inspire healthy debate and disagreement, and offer a bit of a manifesto for what I want my channel to be all about. I'm gonna discuss something I've been thinking about for a long time. So let me just come out and say it. Social media, and more importantly, its influencers, are poisoning medicine. The online community of medical YouTubers, and yes, I know I'm part of that community, is failing you. Being a part of YouTube means acknowledging the impact you have on people's opinions and impressions of what and who medicine looks like, whatever your role. But that also means being transparent and completely forthright about your qualifications and motivations. I am but one voice in the wilderness, and when I see who I'm surrounded by out here, it's honestly disappointing. And this is where I start to get really confused and upset. I began looking at some of the biggest names and most popular doctors on YouTube, and I seriously started wondering, did I miss something? Chiropractors talking about cancer prevention, podiatrists dancing around their living rooms, physician dropouts, giving career tips and discussing fashion hauls? I mean, what the hell is going on here? Millions and millions of views. That's what's going on here. And it makes me worried. If the biggest personalities are more interested in self-promotion, discussing areas they are not qualified to discuss, and equating slick production and large audience size with expertise and self-importance, then we have a major problem here. It is completely fine to be an entertainer. And you all know that some of my videos are meant to be lighthearted consumption. But if you're going to call yourself a doctor on YouTube and use that to promote credibility, then for God's sake, be credible. If you're not qualified or educated in an area that you're discussing, then quit the pretension and stick to what you know. Or make it abundantly clear that what you're saying is opinion and not fact. The clown show has to stop. And that was one of the driving forces behind my desire to begin on YouTube. My professional and personal obligations as a husband and father leave me almost no time for it. But I've chosen to make time because of the frightening lack of objective information on the internet about neurosurgery and medicine in general. I'm a hesitant YouTuber, but now that I've dug my heels in, I think it's more important than ever. I want you to come to my channel and understand you're getting unique and honest insights into what a career in academic neurosurgery really looks like. Notice that I said academic neurosurgery. This channel is not about me. Let me repeat, this channel is not about me. It's not about self-promotion, narcissism, or allaying my insecurities. I could care less about Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you name it. And that's why I'm not on other platforms. And that should be the first question you ask when you're viewing someone's content on YouTube, especially given the glut of supposed medical professionals on the platform. What is their main motivation and focus? I have absolutely no problem with doctors discussing topics outside of medicine. None of us are one dimensional, and as much as I love neurosurgery, I couldn't spend the rest of my life focused only on my career. But when influencers use their supposed credibility as medical professionals, to give investing or real estate advice, focus only on TikTok reactions, promote wellness activities or products, and spend more time talking about what things are like rather than actually showing you, I start to question the validity and value of their information. I can only speak for myself, but it makes me feel like a sucker. It makes me question their true motivation. I personally follow creators whose sole purpose is to entertain and those whose sole purpose is to educate. When the lines are blurred, I start to check out. Is the doctor you're watching actually qualified to gain your trust? Are they worthy of your time? Do they deserve the chance to influence you? What have they actually accomplished? I graduated from Brown University for undergrad, UCLA for medical school, UCSF for neurosurgery residency, and USC for my brain tumor fellowship. I'm in my third year of academic practice where I focus solely on cranial neurosurgery and have a particular passion for complex brain tumors. I teach residents, have published over 80 papers, and I speak at national meetings. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because I'm a raging narcissist with a God complex, or because I want you to know what qualifies me to speak about neurosurgery. On this channel, I want you to have a transparent view about the experiences and training that shaped my career and gave me insights into the profession, patients, and surgeries. Your trust in myself, the information here, and our community is the foundation for any success we have here. So to the larger YouTube community, be better. We all need to be better. 
If you're on YouTube as a medical student or resident influencer, congratulations on your success. But please don't lecture me on what it's like to be a doctor. Your day-to-day -day life in no way resembles what your actual career would look like. And that's no fault of your own. You're still students and trainees, an incomplete product, and we all need to go through the rigors of training to become the best versions of ourselves. I'm still learning and growing now as a faculty member and will be for the rest of my life. Lifelong humility is the key to realizing your full potential. So how about a little humility when discussing your opinions and experiences on YouTube? Experience matters, not just a loud and self-important voice, and it is blood, sweat, and tears that come from real experience that leads to real credibility. If you're a doctor on YouTube who dropped out and no longer practices or is seriously cut back, I hope the decision was right for you. Far be it from me to judge your reasons, we all deserve to be happy. But pretending to carry the clout and wisdom of a fully practicing physician is disingenuous. Respect comes from walking the walk and not just talking the talk. I didn't want to become like my mentors because they talked about neurosurgery well. I wanted to be like them because their hands were gifted, their patients improved, their research moved the needle, and they genuinely gave their all to their careers. They weren't talking to me about real estate, how to find more ways to take time off, work-life balance, the benefits of passive income, building a business, or selling a service. And while there's nothing wrong with any of that per se, it makes me question your motivation. Do you really care about your supposed profession? Or are you realizing that what you really want is to succeed outside of medicine? If that's being true to yourself, then again, congratulations. But remember that success in medicine is what gave you the financial stability and security to consider other options in the first place. Now, some of you might be thinking that I should just relax, that I'm being too judgmental, that I'm taking social media too seriously. I used to discount the importance of social media, but I've learned better. I remember when I first started, I was watching a video that Dr. Mike had put out about his thoughts on doctors on social media, and he made a very insightful point. Our duty and privilege is to take care of patients and to tailor our care to their needs as much as possible. This used to mean making house calls and home visits, but we can still meet patients where they are. And more and more frequently, that means online and on social media. In addition to promoting evidence-based and scientifically backed information, we also need to fight against disinformation, carefully separate objective facts from subjective opinions, and represent our fields and specialties with dignity and respect. Now, that's not always easy. And this is precisely why I'm dismayed by the state of affairs on YouTube and worry that influencers are doing all of us a disservice. I want the public at large to believe that the fierce competition and intensive training shaping pre-meds into medical students, residents, and attending physicians is creating the most competent and accomplished physicians. From watching YouTube, you'd think every doctor is obsessed with work-life balance, maximizing revenue streams and side hustles, retiring early and avoiding too much stress, or maybe you'd think that getting into medicine is a great way to grow a business, build an online audience, or gain sponsorship deals. Or that medicine is a secondary interest and just a means to other ends. Honestly, I'm sick of it. I love what I do. I love that it's hard. I love that it's a challenge. And I love that it gives me the authority to speak out on neurosurgery as a whole and open my world up to you, my audience. So let me know what you think. I'm more than certain that many of you disagree with some or all of what I've said, and I'd love to hear from you. Tell me how wrong I am, or right, in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.